I like either DeRozan or Levine. One of them two and Caruso. I see them going back to the Lakers. I see the Lakers doing anything and everything under the sun because I feel like yeah. they made a big mistake by letting Caruso go. I, do, I disrespected him like he was a Della Vadova and all of this. Like, no. Awesome he, reasons, didn't, huh? he, didn't, he didn't end when he left LeBron. Like, Caruso... His game left with perfect. him, and he yeah he took that tenacious defense in the same game. He took that with him, and he still got it. So I, I, I got to give him more credit than I was giving him. And I think if the Lakers can get him, you'll see him heavy in the rotation when it counts. And then if they either one of them, DeMar or Zach, I think they both would be great for them because that then offsets if Anthony Davis don't want to go for, for 20 Let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. Who do you want? You want – Caruso. I want DeMar DeRozan. Or Caruso I want DeRozan. I, uh, I want DeRozan man. and Caruso because DeRozan okay. is a LA boy. I want him. Okay. And, I, I, and he was set to go there before everything happened. Presented by Sleeper. Yo, 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 we live on location. We are back with another tap in on the NBA season that is. And we got to get y'all up to date on everything that's going on. Black, you with me today? Yes, sir. Man, we're going to start off on the East with them early season standings, man. Right now, we we called it. We we like Boston and Baby J and them. They out there leading the way right now. Boston is 11-3. and three. Last night, they lost to LaMelo in an overtime game, snapping a six-game win streak. LaMelo had 36-8-9. and nine. Baby J was out the gate early, but then things kind of got a little rough in the second half. What you see out them Celtics early in this season, Black? Yeah, I think they good. Uh, LaMelo and them is a good team. You know, when they have their days, they'll have three, four players with 20 or more points. Uh, overtime game, you – when you're the best team in the league, them type of games that, you know, teams gave you, they all that game and, you know, they did their thing. But uh, I think the, the Celtics are in a good position. I'm just excited to see what them Hornets going to do because they, uh, they look like they're getting better and better every game. Yeah, so Jalen did play 34 minutes, 5 of 17, 0 for 5, only 13 points. He had five fouls. On the other hand, like I say, Baby J had it going. He had 31 in the first half, ended up with 45 on 15 for 28, 7 for 15, and 13 boards. He's averaging plus 40. He's averaging plus 40 on, on against the Hornets for like the last maybe eight, seven or eight games, bro. He's doing whatever he wants. The thing that I saw that was, the, you know, that was intriguing to me, bro, Miles Bridges, he's finally back from suspension. He's okay. had a couple of games. He's he's he played forty five minutes last night, so he's well within that rotation. And he, you know, he started last night playing well for them. What do you think about Miles Bridges out there all of the time off from his situation? He's come back looking like you know pretty much the same player, and like he'll be up for free agency after this season, I believe. You know, if he played like he played like last game, he played at an all star level last time we seen him play. So if he can kind of get back back to that, they'll be a good team. All right, man. You got the Philly, Philadelphia 76ers starting off at 10 and 3. They can't be the deepest team in the league after trading for James Harden, but they did receive, well, getting rid of trading James Harden, but they received a lot. Coming back in that trade, what do you think of the, of, the, of the 76ers, Black? Man, they look good. Nick Nurse is doing a great job. They look like a complete Gotta team. Salute Nick Nurse. They, they look like they all love playing together, and they playing the right way. So you can only just, you know, tip your head off to that. So shout out to them. Yeah, shout out to the 76ers. And I got to give Nick Nurse some love. He is doing the damn thing, and he got them looking like it. Milwaukee Bucks, 10 and 4. They 8 and 2 in the last 10. Though they, I feel like they starting to hit their stride, starting to figure things out. Dane, Giannis getting on the same page. They got a couple 40 point games each and a couple games where they both went off 40, 20, 30, 20, whatever. How you see how you see them um shaping up? With them, you know, we always want a team that kind of start clicking overnight. Uh as soon as we add them on the team, we instantly Want to get the finished product, but uh, sometimes it take a team to 
to, to rev on up. They revving on up and they still winning games. So you definitely got to tip your hat off to that. But uh, I just think it's just time with them. When it's time, when it's, they get a little time under their belt, you know, a couple of more dinners, a couple of more team events together and getting really getting to know each other. And I think they're going to be a good team. Yeah, I agree with that, man. Shout out to Dane, man. You know, shout out to the Bucks in general. We had Vin Baker come through last time, and we got Dane who came through for a second time. That episode will be dropping this here week, so y'all go ahead and chop that up and check it out. What about the Miami Heat, Black? They 8-2 and two in the last 10 games, too. They 9-5 and five overall. Look like they starting to hit their stride and figure, figure things out, too. What you think of the Heat? Same old Miami Heat, you know. Them against the world, you know, when when they lose players, they, everybody feel like, oh, they over with. But when you the hardest working team in the NBA, the hard, the best conditioned team in the NBA, you always bring a couple of, you know, rough rough ones out. That's really nice. So uh, I'm 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 glad to see them. They there early and they don't have to make a push late. And shout out to that front office, man. Looking like they found another diamond in the rough in the Jacquez Jr. kid. Like, I, the kid from UCLA, I'm digging his game, Black. I like the way he play. He's fitting in with the, with the team. Great. You know he getting that foundation. But he played 33 minutes last night. 19 points, 8 for 13 from the floor, 3 or 4 from the 3. Young ain't going to be all right, bro. He looking good out there. Yeah. Got the Orlando Magic, Black. You know, Orlando Magic. Yeah. Orlando Magic. <laughs> they got Paolo Franz and the crew out there coming into their own, man. They eight and five, man, getting some learning some lessons on the road, man. I like the way the young boys is coming into coming into shape. What do you think of Paolo Franz and the Magic crew? Oh, I love that group. Oh, I love their whole team. Now they're deep with a lot of young talent yeah. that can that can really play. Uh, but I just want them to maintain it for the the rest of the year. Uh the hardest thing to do is to win five months in a row, you know. You win one month, you win two months, you have a bad another month, you know. This is the learning curve. Uh, they really don't have that veteran leadership on their team to to consistently show them how to win. So um, hopefully the coaches do a good job. I love the coaches still. Hopefully the coaches do a good job to keep them focused all year so they can have another month like they have in, in November and, you know, transforming on to December and when teams kind of rep their stuff up. So uh, I'm looking forward to see where they land at at the end. What about them paces, Black? Seven and five, they look like they hit a little, you know, little speed bump slowing down a little bit. But and young boy Tyrese Halliburton had 32 assists, zero turnovers in two games. Bro, that ain't never happened before. Yeah, that's, that's, that's some amazing stuff he's doing out there. He's being a leader. He's being a general. Uh, that's why they record is what it is. And, uh, like, same thing with them. Uh, biggest thing is about maintaining it for the rest of the year. You know, uh, they say, you know, it's it's a little myth. But they say guys don't be in shape. They take November to get in shape. So if they take November to get in shape, if they can still continue to do this through December, January, February, April, like, that's that's the ultimate goal and that's the test for them. New York Knickerbockers. They eight and six, man. It's kind of been a mixed bag early this season. Even though they above five hundred, they've been kind of up and down. Slow start by Randall. He's since picked it up with his scoring. What do you see from these guys, Black? They lost last night by seventeen to to a emerging Minnesota team. We'll get into them when we get to the West. But they lost last night by seventeen to the to the T Wolves. What do you see out of these Knicks this year, bro? I don't know. I, I I still feel like they haven't found their identity yet. We don't. I don't know who's who. I want if Bronson gonna have another year like he had last year because you know once you have the, that type of year now you, your name is all over the scouting report and mm -hmm. um so I just don't know about the Knicks. Uh, I I loved having them in the playoffs last year. Love seeing you know the crowd and all that stuff. So we are gonna see. Like I say, it's a long season and. We're going to see when the guys get in shape and guys get up to see how, how everything fold out. Yeah, I feel like they they uh, they uh haven't found that 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 consistency yet where they, you know, night to night know what it's going to be. It's been kind of a mixed bag. I mean, you obviously know it's going to be between Brunson, Randall, and, and Barrett, who who kind of like lead the charge. But uh, it's it's kind of been up and down between those three guys, and I think until they figure figure out some type of consistency, it's gonna be it's gonna be a, a up and down year for them so far. But you know, 
They got time. It's early yet. Let's head out west, Black. Them Minnesota Timberwolves that we talked about a second ago, man. They looking nice, Black. 10-3 and three early on. Ant-Man, Ant-Man is looking like a first-team All-NBA. And I, I, like we said, we we doubted whether Rudy Gobert, Carl Anthony Towns could still continue to coexist. And I feel like they figured it out. I feel like they want to play together. So they making it happen. I mean, last night they both had solid games contributing to a W. So what you think of, the, uh, of T-Wills, Black? I, I like the makeup. I didn't see it uh, initially before uh, before the trade and when the trade happened. But uh, seeing it now, they got big guards. Anthony Elvis, Daniels, they got big guards that push up because they have big mans protecting the goal. Um uh, not too many teams in the NBA has that type of demographic, you know what I'm saying? And um, it's, it's, it's looking like that's the recipe they going with, and, and this is what they plan with. And Anthony Edwards is definitely going to be a, probably an all-star this year, and he's definitely going to be in the MVP race this year. And I uh, I love how Cole Anthony Towns is uh, relinquishing that to him. I yeah, it's feel not like, like a struggle. I, I feel like it's like yeah. a transition, and his is more of a support type situation. He's not fighting. Yeah, it's not a. It's not a. a, a, a I don't want to say Shaq. Well, Shaq and Kobe thing. You know, uh, I feel like uh, they letting him spread his wings, and um, by letting him spread his wings and and doing what they're doing, I feel like they're gonna be one of them teams at the end that's gonna be hard to beat. Straight up. Denver Nuggets ten and four, man. They 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 started. They you know I still think they got their foot on the gas. They still mashing the gas. Ten and four. Last night, the Joker and Mike Malone both got ejected, showing some of their passion and fire. But um, you know this is this is this is early season for a team coming to, to defend their title. When they had a hot start to begin with, they were playing against a two and twelve team. Uh, what do you think of Denver so far, bro? I think Denver good. They lost Jamal Murray, which I feel like Denver is a deep team. They definitely can have somebody that to replace him. They got deep enough player. But uh, losing Jamal Murray, and um, I think that hurt them a little bit. But they're just a great team. You know, they're going to be there. They're the team to beat. I don't feel like uh, before you win a championship this year, you're going to have to go through Denver. And um, they showing that. I agree with you there. OKC Thunder, man. This on the low. On the low. This might be one of my favorite, most fun teams to watch, bro. Like, I'm going to kick it off. They, I mean, they 10 and 4, but, like, you already know how I feel about SGA. That's, like, my favorite young boy to watch right now. I can't even call him young boy no more. Just my favorite, you know, dude to get out there and watch who I feel is just so nice. And then they 73 in the last 10, and you got checked. Chet coming forward, boy. Chet say, all right, now you switching up on me. I'm going to remember you now, Chet. Out there putting up big numbers, hit the game time three in that corner against the Suns. That was crazy. He had about 30 some that game in the first place. What you see out of these OKC Thunder is extremely deep, young, and talented, bro. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm with you on that. I, uh, they're one of my favorite teams to watch. Shay is one of my f- Favorite players to watch, just how smooth and under control he is. Like he's so smooth and under control all the time. It's like you you damn near want somebody to get him off his rocket a little bit or give some emotion out of him because he just be focused and going out going straight to work. The OKC Thunder, man, like <laughs> they gonna be a problem. And they're oh, gonna be a they, serious problem, and they still got a million picks. They if still they, got if, a million yeah, picks. <laughs> if they stay, if they stay healthy. Uh, it's gonna be some stuff. You know, they got a lot of, like I said, they got a lot of guys that even ride their bench. That's that's real nice. That can help a team out. So, man, shout out to them. I just love watching them play. Yes, sir. Then we got the Dallas Mavericks. Black. We got Luca the Don and the bus driver Kyrie over there. They nine and five. They you know, they ain't – they right there. They didn't think of this early. You can't really say much about it. What you thinking about them? I'm just glad to see the chatter is gone. I, I haven't really heard people say that if they can play together, like how it was when Kyrie first got there. Uh, right, right, I'm just, right, I'm just glad that chatter is gone. I'm glad they got a free mind. They out there playing good. They got the young fella, uh, the draft pick, uh, Lively, Lively uh, playing he's gonna, he's gonna perfect. Giving you giving you them them Tyson Chandler little vibes or whatever, but uh, 
Man, I, you know, Kyrie is one of the, my favorite players to just watch and just watch what he do. I'm just happy that uh, that an organization like like the Dallas Mavericks and uh, accepting him and 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 he doing his thing, man. All that all that media is not on them. It's like they can go to work and do their job and and get busy. So I feel like that's why they having a decent start right now. Straight up. Let's talk about that Beam team, Black. Them Sacramento Kings, man, they came on strong with the Beam last year. You know, they had uh, had Swift, Swipe of the Fox. He was out a little bit early this season, but he's back now. They 8-6, and six, getting back on the on the, on the LA high horse. I like that young team, Black. I, I love DeMontis Sabonis and, and Swipe of the Fox, that one-two punch, but I love the, the peripheral, the Keegan Murrays, the, the Malik Monks. I like the pieces they got to go with it. What you think? Sacramento got brewing out there at eight and five in the West. Yeah, I love I love Sacramento. Love what they doing. Uh, I've been hearing hearing talks of may they might be in the Levine race. They might be in the the, the Siakam race or the OG uh, or the OG race. Uh, mm-hmm. I feel like if they get one 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 more of them players, like man, they can just step up to another level. I'm expecting to see them at the end. I'm expecting them to see them in the fight. Uh, I think they kryptonite is them Golden State Warriors, but I think they're going to give a lot of people problems. Okay, I dig it. Let's get on to them Lakers, man. Eight and six. We got to talk about the the the, uh, the 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 ageless wonder that is LeBron James at 38 years old, averaging 26.4, 8.2, and 6.5. And he just had 37 the other night against the Rockets. Like, what you, what you seeing out of LeBron and the Lakers? At eight and six so far, bro. It's cringing for me because it's like I'm so scared that he's gonna get hurt. He's playing all these minutes. It's early in the season. Heavy minutes. It's a long season. It's it's kind of cringy for me. But man, just to watch him, it's amazing to watch. Year 21, and he's doing what he's doing. So man, you gotta tip your head off to him. And uh, I feel like they're figuring it out. Uh, I've been hearing that they in a lot of races for a lot of guys. Uh, yeah. So I just want to see what it play out. I don't think this is going to be the – by the trade deadline, I don't think this is going to be their team. I think they're going to add some different pieces to it by the uh, trade deadline. I'm just interested to see where it go from there. Yeah, me too, man. I, I think, like you say, LeBron is is unreal and unbelievable. But um, I'm seriously still on the Anthony Davis kick. I'm ready for him to just be – no longer the question mark and this, that, and the third. I want him to be consistently dominant, the guy. I mean, I think he's consistently been there defensively. It's just been his offense that's kind of gone up and down, the scoring part of it. But yeah. for me, I think if he can continue to be that dominant force that he's being blocking shots, and I think he's leading the league in blocks and being on the glass the way he is, that can that can be enough for what they need. Because like you said, I'm a, I'm with you. I feel like they're going to get one of these guys and before the deadline is up, and they're not going to look the same by the time February passes. So I'm yeah. with you on that one. Let's get to them Phoenix Suns, man. They are struggling out of the blocks. I feel, I feel like KD is in a situation where he's not been able to play with his big three the last couple times right away. Now we got Bradley Beal out for another couple weeks. With the back. And the thing about that, Black, you know I had two back surgeries, bro. To hear that he was supposed to be scheduled to play one night and then to then be pulled and then not only just pulled for that game and not like he going to come back next game, but they said three weeks. That's alarming to me when you're dealing with a back because that's the the back is the the center of everything. You know what I'm saying? You can't do nothing if your back hurt. And for me, I know that he had – they're taking this – Playing it with caution because it is the back, and it's 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 something that you don't know if it'll get to where they want it to be. And it, even if he does get back out there, you kind of worry about how how good is it going to be for the rest of the way. So I think I have concern with the Suns because of that, because of the absence of the the big three being there consistently together. It's it's really only been KD and then maybe KD and Devin Booker with the rest of the team. What do you think? Man, it's unfortunate that you have these injuries and you can't get a chance to really get that chemistry and play and get all your guys on board. Right now, it's man, they got to get every game that they can get because uh, a lot of teams looking at that without their firepower, like man, we can we can get that game. So I think it's just a slow short start for them. Uh, 
they they got to they got to focus on getting healthy more than anything and uh, try to win up many games they possibly can. Now I agree with that, man. We're gonna see how that works. We got a couple storylines going on, man. Right now the Bulls are five and ten, and like we just went through all the different teams. You were saying it's a possibility for people to be getting somebody. Three of those dudes are coming from their team, possibly four. They saying Caruso. DeRozan, Levine, all on the block, and and Vucevic could be as well. So they could be trying to just, you know, do the whole blow that Empty whole house. thing up. Yeah, yeah, they might be trying to just blow the whole core up. And so if that happens, the two, you know, obviously the two, two of the most coveted guys are, are DeMar, DeRozan, and Zach Levine. Where do you think they could go somewhere and could, like, help teams that are in contention and, and kind of put them in a situation where this gives them a, a – a far better situ- a chance than they had before if they get w- one of those two guys. Man, I feel like they can go to a lot of teams. Uh, Miami, 76ers, the L.A. Lakers, the uh, Sacramento Kings. It's it's a lot of teams out there can definitely use their services of a player and a um, veteran player and leadership that they bring to the table. I, I just – I hate it that it's, it's falling apart like this because I loved it when I first seen it. When I seen Lonzo Ball and I seen Levine yeah. with DeRosa, then Big Vu. Like, it was just how they first started off playing. It just looked so good to see a year or so later that it came to this. It's just – it's saddening. You know, that's the hometown team. Uh, it's just saddening to see. But uh, if, if they get a chance to get that DeMar DeRosa or that Levine or – I just say any of them guys that's over there, man. Um, I think uh, some of these teams can definitely make their team much, 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 much more better. Yeah, I, I, man. Listen, first of all, if nobody, if, if you didn't get to see Lonzo and Caruso in that same backcourt pressing up hundred ninety four feet full court, the way they was defending, bro, it was a short window. But I'm telling you, it was special. I saw it yeah. in person here in Orlando when they were pressing the snot out of us, and it was crazy. I was like, God damn, these boys is defending. So I, I, I definitely will miss that. But I think, man, I like, I like DeRozan. I like either DeRozan or Levine. One of them two and Caruso. I see them going back to the Lakers. I see the Lakers doing anything and everything under the sun because I feel like the Lakers, they, 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 they. They they made a big mistake by letting Caruso go. I yeah. do, I disrespected him like he was a uh, Della Vadova and all of this. Like no, Austin he Reed didn't. He didn't. He didn't end when he left LeBron. Like Caruso, his game left with perfect. him, and he yeah he took that tenacious defense in the same game. He took that with him, and he still got it. So I I, I got to give him more credit than I was giving him. And I think if the Lakers can get him. You'll see him heavy in the rotation when it counts. And then if they either one of them, DeMar or Zach, I think they both would be great for them because that then offsets if Anthony Davis don't want to go for, for 20 Let me or ask you this. Let me ask you this. Who do you want? You want Caruso or I want DeMar DeRozan. Or Caruso I want DeRozan. I, and, I want DeRozan man. and Caruso because DeRozan okay. is an L.A. boy. I want him. Okay. And, I, and he was set to go there. Before everything happened, so I, 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 you remember last whatever, what was it? A couple, however many years ago, DeRozan thought he was gonna be a Laker, and yeah. he was cool with that. So I mean, for me, I think when you get those type of situations, it's better to have a guy, you know, what I'm saying that was that, that's from there, like he know what it is, he know what LA brings already. So DeRozan, mm-hmm. he's not that he can, he's the type of personality that he's gonna be fine. You know, what I'm saying mm-hmm. he's gonna, he, he doesn't get into all of that. He's a kind of keep it low type dude anyway. So I feel like him being from LA combined with that, he won't get overwhelmed by the bright lights of the Lakers organization and being next to LeBron. Yeah. So I feel like I want those two. Caruso's proven what he could do in that scenario. But I think I like I like DeRozan there because he's another I mean, obviously him or Zach, either one of them could get fifty. That's not an issue. But I'm just saying DeMar, I feel like he he fits that bill a little bit better than me. Yeah. Get to them clippers, man. That clip set. They didn't want mm-hmm. back to back games with James Harden, bro. James Harden, he kicked it off with a four point play to to help win that game over Houston. We gotta shout out to Brody, bro. You know what I'm saying? We was geek. We was happy that he got out of the Lakers organization and he got to our Clippers organization where he was, he was, he was thriving, bro. And then, you know, especially early this season, he was thriving even more. I felt the James Harden trade, just being honest, I felt it hurt him. 
Mm-hmm. He was on his way, I felt, to having his best year and I don't know how many years, but I felt like he was about to have that. I felt the James Harden trade came through a little wrench in the situation, but because it's a it's a they got friendship, they tight, they solid, I feel like they they've been working together and working through it. And I feel like they, you know, getting those two wins over the way and then Russ stepping up, being a leader, saying, Hey, I see what's going on. I come off the bench. I take myself out of the equation. I've done this before. I've been in a situation where I could have a second unit. It's my unit, and I'm used to it. I know you probably not. I'll do that. And now you see it yielding results, man. What do you think of the clips? And what do you what do you think of what Russ did in that situation to try to to try to remedy the situation they was having in that starting lineup? Yeah, I think Russ just be be Russ, like. Uh... I think people pay attention to a lot of other stuff, but Russ be Russ. Russ always been a leader. He always been a team player. He always been a, a just a outstanding guy when it comes to playing his basketball, being on a team, and being a leader. Uh, I, I wouldn't expect nothing out, out of him but that. You know, out of any of them for, to do it, I, he's the one I definitely would have figured out that that would do it or step up and make a move and not put pressure on Ty Lue. But the Clippers as a whole, as a team, I just think that's just going to take time. Uh, different styles, uh, different ways to play. But when when it, it gets to going, when that machine gets to going, it's going to be it's gonna be a scary sight for the other team. No, I agree. I agree all the way. Got to get into that rookie of the year watch, man. Right now, you know, we definitely – it's Chad and Wimby for the most part. That's what it's going to be. Yeah, for that's the what whole I expect. Year. Chad and Wimby it's, and maybe the Thomas twin, but Chad and Wimby for real. Yeah, it's like though it's going to be, you're going to get other, bloop, bloop, you're going to get other blips on the radar. Brandon Miller going to get a hit. You know what I'm saying? Like the the, the Thompson twin is going to get hit. Somebody else may get a hit. But the the main attraction that we know is going to come down to is Chad Holmgren and Victor Wimbayama. Right mm-hmm. now, Chet averaging 17.7 rebounds, 7.8 rebounds a game. And the dopest part about what he's doing, he said this before he got to the league. He said he felt like he could be a 50, 40, 90 guy. Right now, yeah. he's shooting 56.5 from the field, 46 from the three, 90.7 from the free throw line. So he is indeed living up to what he said he can do. Yeah. Then you got Wimby. Averaging 18.6 points per game, 9.1 rebounds on 42 from the field, and 2.6 blocks per game. But mm-hmm. the Spurs have lost nine straight, and we know that the you know the the the, the Thunder out there hooping. So who you what you thinking of that rookie of the year uh, watch right now, Black? Yeah, I think that's probably going to be the difference. I think their numbers is going to be close to each other uh, all year. I don't feel like one is going to separate from the other. Uh, but I feel like the difference between them is that I feel OKC is going to be a winning team, and I feel like San Antonio is a team that's tr- trying to figure it out. Exactly. That'll be – we'll see how they determine that with the voting, but I think it's going to go down. It's going to go down to the wild with those two. You got the in-season tournament heating up, Black. Some, team, some teams that play like three out of their four group games, some have two, two or more to go. Right now, we got the semis in three weeks. You got East Group A led by Pacers 2-0, Sixers 2-1. East Group B led by the Bucks and the Heat. The Bucks and Heat are 2-0 each. They mm-hmm. have the lead over the Heat in the point differential if it came down to points. The, 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 the Bucks would win because they have more points. East Group C led by the Boston Celtics at 2-0. And, oh, and surprisingly, them Brooklyn Nets 2-1. Mm-hmm. Get to get to that West Group. Hey, every time I say this, all I can think about is LeBron in the post game talking about man, it's five hundred thousand dollars. As much money he got, he's still concentrating on the money. So you gotta like the Lakers to win they group. They they three and zero in the group in the group A and the Utah Jazz right behind them at two and one. Mm-hmm. West Group B, you got the Pelicans two and one tied with the Nuggets two and one, but the Pelicans lead with the point differential. Mm-hmm. West Group C, same situation. You got the Kings 2-0, the T-Wolves 2-0, but the Sacramento Kings lead with the point differential. So we're going to see how these in-season tournament games play out. I'm telling you, though, I, I've been impressed so far, bro, between yeah. the jerseys, the the court, and most importantly, the intensity of the game, the way the guys have played. No, it's, starting games, to, it's starting to wear play. on you. It's, start, it's starting to get to you now. Okay, okay, yeah. Last week you weren't talking there, but I'm glad you. I'm glad it's getting yeah, to you now. They, man. Know, they know what it is. Now, 
We got to get to our sleeper pick segment, Black. You know, we got our sleeper pick segment for the end season tournament games tonight. But we're going to make the more or less pick. So I need you to stay with me here, Black. We got mm-hmm. the Lakers versus Utah. Will the Kane, the Kane, will the Kane James score more or less than 25.5 points? Now, you know, yeah, he been over 26 now. He's been, he been doing the damn thing now. I feel like the King is 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 gonna come through. I I, I feel like he's gonna average more than twenty five points. I'm I'm a hundred percent with you. This is an in season tournament game. He already spoke about how he want that extra five hundred thousand. You know, ain't nothing but pocketbook money with him and like my Prince of King voice, pocketbook money. But he want that. So I, I feel like LeBron, he about to get thirty tonight. He about to get thirty tonight, man. This is Utah. He going to get 30 now. I'm saying LeBron goes some more than 25.5 points. Let's move to the next game. 76ers versus Cavs. Will Joel Embiid, the big process, go more or less than 29.5 points tonight, Blake? What you got? That's, that's, that's 29. Uh, that's basically 30. Yeah, I, I got Joel Embiid scoring the 30-piece tonight, man. I'm with you on that. I feel like he going to score plus 30 and, and, and Max, he going to be around 26, maybe 30. But I, I think Joel Embiid is in that place right now where he know what he got to do. He got to bring him on home. In that same game, Black, will Evan Mobley score more or less than 16.5 points? And FYI, he's averaging 16.6. So he's averaging 0.1 points more than what they are asking is he going to get tonight. I think Evan Mobley is going to score more than 16.5. I got to go with you, bro. He averaging 16.6. I ain't going to doubt that, man. If he was averaging like 15.6 or something, I might say lower. But, like, he averaging that over there. I I got to get that to him. He get that tonight. He get over 16.5. The Magic versus the Raptors. Franz, the brother of Wagner, Franz Wagner, will he score more or less than 4.5 rebounds tonight? Man, he's averaging 5.6. Yeah, I think he's going to get more. I'm going to say it for he definitely, Franz too active not to get more than 4.5 rebounds. For sure he getting that. For sure Franz is getting that. Yeah, I'm with that. That's a crazy question there. They must ain't seen how hard him and Mo, the brother Wagner's play. That's what they do. Hey. Don't forget to go check out Sleeper and remember to use promo code KH and you'll get up to $100 match on your first deposit. We got this week's Outlook Black. The end season tournament is tonight and Friday should start to really give us a picture of what the whole tournament going to look like and how it's going to shape up. We got 14 games coming out tonight with the game. We got some big games. Milwaukee at Boston. Sack at New Orleans. We got the our Clippers at the Spurs. Seeing Wimby again. We got the Warriors at the Phoenix. I want to see that one. And this Mavs versus Lakers. Luka versus LeBron and Kyrie in there. What what you think of them games, Black? Oh, I, I like I've been loving the end season tournament. Uh, I, I'm excited to just see the whole play out of it, and you know to understand it one time through and uh, see the championship of it. So. Uh, I've been paying attention. I'm definitely going to pay attention tonight. Hey, man, I'm kind of excited about uh, about tonight, today's uh, random stat of the week. Okay. I'm going to tell you why at the end, but, you know, y- y'all get the gist of it. You know, Victor Wimbayama Victor Wimbayama Yama. is the third teenager to have eight blocks in the game. Yep. Do you know who he joins, Black? He joins Josh Smith, who came straight out of high school, who was a yeah, teenager. That's, that sound right. And the other person who make up the third to go along with Victor Wimby and Josh Smith is a black, skinny high school kid that I know. Hey. There he is, Miles. Did you know that that was you, Black? You, I, was the, I, you I are one of three teenagers to ever in the history of the whole entire NBA. It's one, two, three. It's Victor Wimbayama, it's Josh Smith, and it's Darius Miles with hey, eight I, blocks in an NBA game, bro. You was feel getting that like stuff I'm, up out of there, huh? I feel like I'm seven four right now when I say my hey. name on that list, you know? That, but, hey, uh, look, that's that's hard. That's good company, Black. Like, look, hey. you feel like Sosa right now? Yeah, hey, I feel like I'm, I'm I done added another <laughs> I'm I'm seven I'm seven six right now, man. How how I feel when I say my name on that. 
Hey, that 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 hey, look, that's pretty sharp right there, bro. Out of all the teenagers that ever play in the league, it's only three of y'all. Like, what Birdman voice? All three of y'all. You hear me? Like, boy, yeah. that's that's I'm you blocking you know, shit, just, getting shit up out of there. That type of shit you just say walking around. Yeah, you know, me and me and Wimby and Josh just hang out by ourselves. Don't nobody else get to kick it with us, right? That's yeah. how you do. Yeah, you gotta be a youngin to to do it like we did. That just got me thinking, bro. We've been slacking. We gotta go pull up on Jay Smith on Smooth. We gotta pull up we on Jay Smooth. Do, I'm gonna guys, make that happen smooth, real man. soon. That's one of your high school confidants we gotta get into. We're gonna make that happen real sooner than later. Yeah. What's your shout out for the day, Black? What you what you got? We got a shout out for the week. Oh uh, man, my shout out is for two reasons. It's twofold here. I got my shout out is for the Brody, aka Russell Westbrook, right? Yes, sir. First reason is taking that leadership and saying, hey, he surveyed the situation and seen the, the, you know, the team, looking at the team. He's been in it. He's seeing it. He's seeing what's going on. He said, hey, I come off the bench for the, for the, for the good of the team, for the sake of the team. I ain't got no pride in this. I ain't got no ego. I want to win. I want us to win. I want us to be successful. For somebody like him to do that, you and I both know that's a big deal, bro. That's something big. He didn't have to do that. He was there first. He was already starting to really, really shine and, and, and fit into that role. And he didn't have to do that. So that's one reason, because he acknowledged that and he's seen how he can help his team do better. And they 2-0 since him doing that. Secondly, for him knowing that 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 his real gift here is to, to give back. The way he does for his community, I saw him doing the turkey drive and the food drive, giving back. And, like, that's his message, that he knows that, his biggest purpose for being here is in basketball. It's for what he has to give back to his community and how he touches and he empowers people in the community and he puts resources there. So to know that and to be that and to continue to show up like that, he had his whole family there, man. I love that. You know how we are about giving back. And he's always done that. This is why he has his clothing brand. It's to, it's to empower inner city kids to be able to create and do all of those things. So super salute to, to Russell Westbrook, the Brody man, to continue putting things in his community, resources and activations and just staying connected and staying locked in. Now he a L.A. Clipper. He at home all the time. and He get to do things like this where he would normally be in another city, but now he's in his own community. So, man, super shoot, super shout out to you, Russ, and keep doing your thing, homie, for real. Yeah, uh, I got two of them, too. Man, just shout out to NBA, uh, this in season tournament is 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 forming right. Uh, I'm excited. You got you has the you have big time NBA fans really excited of what's going on and how is it playing out. And uh, shout out to Wimby man because you're on the list with like like the Darius Miles and the Josh Smith. That's ain't no list better hey, than that. So hey. you know what I'm saying. So shout out to you for being on that list and making history. <laughs> Straight up, straight up, we'll be welcome. You know what I'm saying? Welcome. <laughs> First of all, welcome. <laughs> that's what's up. All right, man, that's a wrap for us today, man. We just tapped on the things that we wanted to tap on this week. We're going to stay in tune with y'all people tapping in and tapping out, being the blackest one. Knuckleheads out. <laughs>